Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. The next piece and the final piece, the last piece, number 48, that is the clapper block. I've done all of these other little segments here, and believe it or not, they were just too small to film because even I had a hard time seeing them. I will put a link to the tool post video that I shot for the lathe. This piece is exactly the same as the one on the EL1 with the exception of the rear diameter here. The rear diameter is a little bit bigger. And I guess that's because this takes more of an impact. Anyway, this piece is not very technical, but you do want these holes to line up with those holes and not pinch. It has to swing freely, and that's where the name clapper came from, because as it rebounds, it claps against the face of the tool slide. I think you're going to like the way this is done. This is an easy little part to do, and it is the final part, and I am smiling ear to ear because of that. So let's go over to the bench. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Make it happen. All right, the tool slide you just saw me do in a previous video, and that is not a cut. That is red marker because when I make really small parts, I might put a Sharpie marker to them, turn them red so they can stick out like a sore thumb on the floor or in the chip bin. Now, this guy has to have some holes in it here, holes in it here, and they have to go together perfectly. Well, there's no better way to assure that's going to happen than to do them at the same time. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to squeeze it like this. I'm going to drill the hole all the way through, and then I'll adjust this back surface and this back corner so that it swings freely. Then I'll invert it and put the tool post feature in it. Now, the way that I'm going to assure if these holes are, are not identical, when the thing comes time to slap down, it's going to bind before it ever seats. Okay, it's not going to go down. It's going to end up like that. Now, there's an easy solution to that, too. And it looks like this. Lay it in there. Lay this on top of it. Now, when you squeeze it, you'll probably compress this paper. This paper is about three and a half thousandths. That's what, tenth of a millimeter? 0.1 millimeters and when you're done drilling the holes simply remove the paper and you have the clearance that you need and that's how we're going to do it all right let's set up the mill make that happen last piece guys last piece i can't tell you how happy i am well as the parts get smaller it gets more difficult to not only hold the part but to edge find the part and make the setup since these parts are relatively small and there's not going to be a lot of exposure here, I'm going to indicate the setup and then I'm going to install the part. So I'll know where my zero surfaces are. That way when I stick the part in there, be sure the part is registered firmly against your zero surfaces. Make the offset accordingly. The spacer that I'm going to use under the part is aluminum. I'm going to drill and ream directly into this, and we're just going to call that good. As you drill this part, you can feel the resistance because of the difference in materials. Actually, the brass is softer, so the drill goes faster. You need to stop drilling when the cast iron comes up through the hole. <laughs> Only kidding, of course. I went well into the aluminum to make sure that the reamer will go to the sufficient depth. 
and I'm reaming right on size for the pin that's going in there. I can always adjust the pin. This particular component is longer than it needs to be on both sides. I did that intentionally. I'm going to adjust the one side first for the pivot, and then I'll put the feature in for the tool post. At that time, I will cut it off to its overall length. Simple setup for sizing the end of the block, and it will give me the exposure to the corner that I need to round off and chamfer. And for anybody wondering, yes, there is a block on the other side of the vise. Keep this vise from tilting under pressure. Always a good idea. Take a cut, test fit it, measure it, take a final cut. Midterm check. I would say anytime you see little track marks like that from the end of a radius cutter that you've gone right to the limits of the cutter, try not to do that. But for this application, I'll be easily be able to file that out. It's not an issue. Let's take a look at how it works. It goes right in here. Gauge pin. That's what you're looking for. As the tool traverses across the part, it's under load, and as it comes back, it's allowed to drag and then reset for the next cut. Never block. Let's put the little counter bore in for the tool post, cut it to length, call this one a wrap. Well, the holes in the counter bore for the tool posts are not very exciting, but I'm going to show it anyway. Here we go. Well, that is the final subassembly for this model. I'm going to add a couple of Teflon spacers here and there. I will point them out as I assemble the main model in the final video. And it is going to be awfully quiet here for the next couple of days uh, in the model area. Anyway, 
I have thoroughly enjoyed this. This was a whole lot of fun, and I appreciate everybody that stopped by to watch all these uh, segmented videos. Payday is coming, probably going to be this weekend. There's an awful lot of video footage to go through to do the assembly justice. Anyway, there you go. That is called a clapper block. Now I know what it does and how it works. The table actually advances for the next cut as this thing moves back across the workpiece. So if that were to happen without the tool post moving, it would jam the tool. So as it comes back across the workpiece, it can move to the side as it readies for the next cut, and then it makes the next cut and does the exact same thing. It's a very clever design. Anyway, that's all I got for today. That was a quickie. I hope that you enjoyed watching that. These were some pretty fussy little pieces to make, but take your time one step at a time. Don't be afraid to mess it up. If you do, just start over. Just don't make the same mistake twice. Now we have a clapper block, a whole bunch of pieces ready to go together. Thank you very much for watching wherever you are in the world. I hope you are well and happy and safe. This is Joe Pye at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out. <laughs>